Today's the day. It's finally time to unpack the YouTube studio renovation. So we bought a house. Actually, we bought it a few years ago now. And since then, we were just treating it as an investment property, renting it out while we were living in Sydney. But we decided to do the place up and move in. And of course, I wanted to document the process. So in this pretty unique series, for my channel at least, I'm unpacking each step of the renovation process and talking about how we saved a heck of a lot of cash along the way, as well as some of the mistakes we made that hopefully you can avoid in your own renovations. Today's episode is all about this grimy garage out the back. We'll look at how we transformed it into a YouTube studio space for me to work in full time and how we managed to do so pretty much just over a three day period. Now, I've been teasing this particular reno on my channel for quite some time, but for this particular transformation, we're breaking it into a couple of different parts. Today's episode is all about the reno itself, but because there's so much to fit in, we'll also probably do another episode where I talk about some of the big issues that I encountered after the fact. And then we'll of course do another episode that will incorporate a full rundown of how we've set up the space inside so that it can operate effectively as a full-time video production studio. So with that being said, let's take a look at what this space looked like at the start. And it doesn't take long to realize how much of an eyesore this carport slash garage was. It looked horrible on the outside, but then on the inside, it was a pretty sad story as well. Cracked concrete, permanently filthy brickwork, exposed roofing, and just a pretty poor construction quality overall. Even if I didn't do YouTube full time, there's just no way that this space could stay the way that it was. So here was the plan. We were gonna knock out this middle wall to open up the space completely, but because that wall was structural, we'd need to put in two LVL beams to hold the roof up. From there, we'd build new framing around the entire existing brickwork, which would then allow us to bring in a plasterer to set and sand new walls and a new roof for the entire space. On the outside, we'd use the existing space where this old wooden window slash half door was to create a space for the new entryway door. And then we'd also install two new windows in the space where the current entry ways were. We then covered the entire thing with monument cladding to hide all of the brickwork and make it look much more modern. To finish it off, we'd add a new entryway deck and awning at the front. And as for the existing driveway and washing line, well, they'd be demoed and removed with new grass laid to reclaim this area of the backyard for the kids. Now, I was lucky enough to have both of my brothers come up to work on this reno with me and my father-in-law was also in for the ride. But the deal was because we'd all left our families at home a few hours drive away, we could only allow for three days of work. How much could we get done in that time? Well, let's find out. Okay, so day one was here and we were up early and ready to go. First thing that needed to be done was the demo work. So that external door was removed to create the space for the new door. And once some temporary support posts were installed inside, my father-in-law and I worked away at demoing that wall down the middle of the carpool. My brothers then started working away at measuring, cutting, and then installing the new framework inside. One of my brothers actually owns his own construction company. So it's all very professional and I'll leave a link below to where you can check out his socials if that's something that you're interested in. But while they were working away on the framework, there was a little more demo work that needed doing, but then for the most part, the rest of day one was devoted to finishing off the internal framework. We actually didn't quite finish it on day one, but we did manage to get those LVL support beams installed, which was pretty solid going. All right, day two was here and we knew we had our work cut out for us. Whilst we were all working on finishing the internal framework, which included the new roofing battens as well, my electrician came around and started digging a trench to run power from the house to the new studio. And once the inside framework was complete, we were able to then move onto the exterior framework. In some ways, it can actually be a much trickier job to build around something that already exists, particularly if it's in as bad a condition as this carport was. It just means you have to be overly diligent with your measurements because you're working around a structure that is perhaps uneven or that has some weird angles. And these are things that were very true for this particular carport. So whilst that was taking place, my father-in-law got to work with cutting and installing all of the new wall and roof insulation inside, which is a super important part of the process. And it was at this point in time that we wondered whether we'd have some troubles with water seeping in through the concrete floor. So we covered it in a couple of coats of this damp stop waterproofing solution, just to be safe. If only I knew what was about to happen about a month later. But I digress, we'll cover that in a later episode. 
Now, by the end of day two, we were tired and running on fumes, but the entire framework was done and it was ready to start being covered in that monument clay. And so day three was upon us, the last day for all of us, so we knew we had to work as fast as possible. We were straight off to work with installing the new flashing on the exterior framework. And whilst that was taking place, our skip bin finally arrived and my father-in-law was the man of the hour and was somehow able to fit all of those bricks that we demoed on day one into a very tight space for collection later on. Should we have had the skip bin there on day one? Yes. Is it a lesson learned for next time? Also, yes. But from there, we started the process of installing the sarking, which is this membrane material that adds just another layer of weather protection and insulation to a space. And then we could go about cutting the color bond and then mounting it to the framework. This was a fairly lengthy process of rinse and repeat. Sarking, cutting, mounting. The new windows were also installed during this entire process, but slowly and surely, you could definitely see things coming together. Now, whilst all of this was going on, I was trying to get on the phone with my plasterer who was meant to be there that day, working on setting and sanding the new walls and roof for the interior of the space. But he was a no-show. Even so, there was still a lot of work to get done, so I knew I'd have to solve this issue once back in Sydney. The electrician had come and wired everything up inside, ready to complete the install. And then somehow, some way, by the end of the day, we had gotten a large majority of the work done. Structurally, everything was good to go, but there were a few jobs left to complete, which I'd have to manage remotely whilst I was back in Sydney. This included the installation of the new door and the new skirting boards as well, plus a few other components. But luckily I had some other workers on site already who I had arranged to complete some other work around the house. And so I was able to get them to complete the work without much fuss. Somehow, I also found a plasterer who was able to get there within the week to complete all of the gyprock work inside. And so once that was completed, I took a second trip up with my very generous father-in-law and across a two day period, we painted the entire inside of the space just before the carpet was installed. I ended up going with Dulux white on white, which has a slightly cooler palette to it, I'd say compared to their other whites. And we just painted the roof and walls the same color, which I think is the way to go these days. So we did a primer and then two top coats and compared to the four coats plus primer that we had to do for the kitchen cabinetry, this felt much more productive. It's again the process of someone cutting in and someone else doing the rolling. But with the fact that we were doing everything the same color, plus the fact that the carpet was yet to be laid, it meant we could be slightly more efficient than if we had have been painting a pre-existing space. We did decide to leave these LVL beams exposed though for a more industrial look. And this meant that there was some careful cutting in that we had to do. Now the last job to finish off this studio nicely was the entryway. Up until just recently, actually, there was nothing there and it definitely needed some sort of finishing off. But because this was well and truly after the initial reno, I of course had to enlist the help of a local carpenter, but he worked away very efficiently over a three day period, digging out the grass, installing the joists and framing, and then cutting and installing the new Merbau decking. Whilst he was doing that, I actually went online and found these really awesome and affordable awning brackets. They only cost 90 bucks a pop and they were shipped within a week. After staining them with some spotted gum stain, my carpenter got them installed, and then not too long later, he came back to install the mini org cladding and the flashing on top to complete the awning. So I bet you're ready to see the finished product, right? Well, here it is before we started the reno, and now here it is completed. Now, as you can see, I also got the carpenter who was working on the studio decking to install a couple of extra bits of Merbau below the windows, which allowed me to in turn install some planter boxes. And I think this just helps to tie the space up nicely and provide a little bit of continuity with that Merbau decking. And I know you wanna see inside, but there is still just so much left to unpack and I simply cannot fit it into this one episode. So in the next episode, I'm planning to unpack the issues that I faced after moving into this space and how I went from being a person who loved rain to being a person that feared rain. And shortly after, we'll also unpack all of the work that we've done to make the inside of this space a fully functioning video production workhouse. I've still also got to show you what we're working on for the back deck and the front facade of the house, all of which will be detailed in future episodes. So if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell so you don't miss out when I release future episodes of this series. But aside from that, thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.